Hey, Ding Dongs, I'm Jamie. I'm Richard. And this is Explain It to Jamie, the political comedy podcast in which I, Jamie, a politically innocent but curious young man, have the complicated political happenings of the world explained to me by my politically savvy friend, Richard Lamb. Not just politically savvy this week, but also scientifically savvy as well. Yeah. Um, How you doing, Rick? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. You know, good. just living life, yeah. breathing the clean air yeah. that's going to always be that way and will never not be that way. You Enjoying know, the limitless bounty that Mother Nature gives to us, thinking to myself, oh, I'm so glad there's literally unlimited resources on this planet. <laughs> and I will be able to rest easy knowing that no matter what we do and no matter what happens to this world, Mother Nature will provide for us always. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. um, you know what? I, it's funny you mentioned the clean air because I uh, I went out to Toronto Island uh, like maybe a week or two ago, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize until I went out to the island and then came back to the city how bad Toronto smells most oh, yeah. of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like seriously it's polluted, like, it's like, well, like puke and like sometimes like. Like jizz. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I There's like I didn't know that I knew that specifically what jizz smelled like. It's like a warm blanket of jizz smell, <laughs> yeah. just like swaddling Toronto like yeah. a like a gross baby. Yeah, especially on the east side. Yeah. No um, offense, but it, it, but it's all relative. Eat shit because east side. When <laughs> <laughs> eat shit and get wrapped in jizz. Inside. <laughs> um, no, I like when I got back from New York, spending a month in New York too. I was like, Toronto is the nicest smelling place. I have ever been in my life. Like, nowhere has ever smelled as delicious as Toronto. Because New York, like, where Toronto, like, has, a, like, you know, like a sort of a jizz smell. Yeah. New York is, like, a butthole. <laughs> like, it's like your face is in there, and then, the, like, like, there's, like, the flesh is pressing into you, and there's, like, sweat pouring down your body. And oh, careful. You're getting me excited. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just, like, yeah, I'll save it for Ted Cruz's Twitter feed. Yeah. Did you see that this week? Uh, no, I saw that a lot of people were talking about Ted Cruz. So Ted Cruz, it was discovered, people on Twitter looked through Ted Cruz's, like, tweets he had liked, and he had liked this, like, porn tweet that was, like, <laughs> a two-minute clip of a stepmom coming home and discovering her stepdaughter getting banged by some dude. Wow. Yeah. So, Jamie, what is it you want to learn about this week? I want to, you know, it's funny, because this is a, a political comedy podcast. Right. But we're about to talk about something... That I wish wasn't political. <laughs> yeah. It shouldn't be political. It's climate change. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. How the weather, you know, is changing <laughs> and how, like, dependent on where you're from and who you vote for, your opinion on whether or not that's true um, yep. yeah, is affected. As they say, the weather outside is frightful. But having a healthy and growing energy-based economy is so delightful. That's right. You know, as long as you love me so, Mm -hmm. continue to deregulate the oil industry and place your trust in the corporations which are extracting oil from from Canada and the planet Earth. I love that song. I know. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, Okay, great. Yeah, we'll get into it. I mean, it's funny. Like, in many ways... It seems like a science issue, right? It seems like it seems like something that should be kind of like it's such a series of obvious facts that require action that it is surprising that it's political and it's frustrating that it's political. But at the same time, like in a way, climate change as an issue is the politics of our time. Mm. It is everything. All the problems with our time, climate change is the like intersection flashpoint of literally all of them. Every single thing happening in the world that is politically important is routed at some point through climate change. And if we manage to solve the climate change crisis, we will have like, in order to do it, we will have created a much better and more functional world. Or we will all die. Yay! Yeah. Woo! Hey, well, and then we won't have to worry. As long as we're all dying together. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm scared of death for myself. But if we're all dying, I'm okay with then it. Then I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah. Mostly, yeah, my fear is death is mostly like FOMO. Yeah. <laughs> it's mostly just fear that I'll be missing cool stuff happening back on Earth yeah. while I'm, you know, in heaven, French and Carrie Fisher or whatever. <laughs> whatever it is they do in the Bible, I can't remember. Sure. I, I haven't read it in a while. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay, so um, why don't we uh, rev this extremely highly efficient uh, electric podcast engine zero emissions podcast transmission belt yeah. and podcast panels 
solar panels and <laughs> drive this efficient podcast machine to podcast town. <laughs> Actually, they, they don't make any sound, oh. so it would sound something like this. <sighs> That's actually just the sound of us climaxing <laughs> silently for how energy efficient this podcast machine is. Yeah, if there's ever more than a three-second silence in the room with me and Richard, we both ejaculate. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> ding, 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 dong. <laughs> Yo. Okay, Jamie. Yes. What do you know about climate change? I know that climate change, I have a, a very good source, that climate change was invented by the Chinese uh, as, uh, to, I don't know, fuck up the U.S.? <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> Isn't that right. what Trump said or something? Yeah, he did say something like that. It's Wait like, a second. It's a problem we have in China. Aren't you Chinese? <laughs> What are you talking about, Jamie? <laughs> that crazy. What are you doing with the ozone layer? <laughs> what do you want with it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, isn't, uh, didn't Trump say something like that? What, like that the Chinese made up climate change? Yeah, he was like he blamed them for it, basically. He said, like, in also, typical. Also, is that okay for me to say the Chinese? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> should, should, yeah. That's your word. The Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a weird way to say it. I know, I know. No, he did say that because what Trump's main thing is being told one piece of information about an extremely complicated problem and then like presenting that because that's the only thing he understands. Like then just parroting that and and also blowing that out of proportion and out of context. So I think it is true that like China is a really bad emitter of greenhouse gases because they're industrializing really fast and they're such a big economy, mm. but. No, they're not the only ones responsible. R- Russia, the U.S., the entire Western world is like really at fault here. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I think I think the, I mean, you know, it's we're, we're, it's it's kind of like futile to talk too much about what Trump's point was. But I think his point was that the Chinese invented the idea. That, I got to stop saying the Chinese. And I know <laughs> yeah. it's probably that's, fine. No, that's a fine. You can <laughs> but, say the Chinese. But if we ever do, uh, well, it's yeah. Anyway. Every time, but I think what he was talking about was that they. You're not saying they, like the coolies. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah. Not like, you're not like the wily Asiatics. Yeah. The, the Orientals. You're the fine. Asiatics. Bro. You're fine. Um, bro, you fine. Yeah, it was that they invented the idea of it as like economic warfare with the states because then the states would stop producing so much greenhouse gas, which would make less money, and then and, and the and then the Chinese could uh, to, could could take off. Yeah, that's that like way. saying Black Lives Matter um, like wants police to shoot black people so that they can sell more T-shirts. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Like, like that's, that's the logic at play there in right. Donald Trump's almost certainly Alzheimer's riddled brain um no okay so yes the chinese invented global warming (laughs) okay no no no. yeah Um, right on the money okay so climate change climate change what is it um as we know as probably most people listening to this have heard or suspect um Climate change refers to a phenomenon that is also called global warming. The two things mean the same thing, although, and even though both are accurate terms, I think some people prefer climate change to just head off the um, favorite argument of idiots and Sun (laughs) newspaper readers everywhere. Hey, if the world's getting so warm, why is it cold today? (laughs) Um, Which is a thing that people still fucking say all the time. Um, and, and as both of us have ties to people in Alberta, they say shit like that all the time. For sure. Um, so climate change is a more accurate term, perhaps, because it encompasses the notion that, yes, there is still stuff that's cold. Um, but what it refers to is the fact that the average temperature and basically the average temperatures across the entire world have been steadily going up since the Industrial Revolution in the mid 19th century. Right. Um, the, the long and short of it is that the world's getting warmer. We can measure it. Um, And we can measure it over... We've certainly been measuring it since we've started recording um, temperatures, which again go back to, I think, the late 18th, 
early nine, 19th centuries. So mm. like you, we have temperature measurements that go back that far. Granted, we don't have global temperature measurements, but we do have all kinds of fancy science. Yeah. Um, and one of the main ways that scientists use to um, measure temperature is they drill into Antarctic ice. Um, the ice in Antarctica is like uh, the rings on a tree. It forms in layers and the deeper layers are like older and stuff and it hasn't melted you know in uh, like millions of years so if you drill a huge hole down and basically pull out a big tube of ice what you're getting is like a snapshot of what the air was like at whatever moment that that layer of ice formed and doing that scientists have been able to go back in time in time essentially and analyze what the atmosphere looked like for about the last 800,000 years. They yeah. have now measurements about how hot it was, what and what was in the air at a given time. And now I know I know one of the, uh, you know, being from Alberta, one of the most popular arguments against climate change is like, but, you know, Alberta used to be tropical way back when. Right. You know, like, uh, the, the, the climate has always been changing. It's always been different. And I know from watching Bill Nye, he, he talks a lot, he says, but the, what's important here isn't that it's changing, but it's the rate at which it's changing. That's 100% it's correct. It's never changed this quickly before, and that's, that's what's fucked up. That's 100% correct. Um, and also, it's not just the temperature. Like, it, it is true that about, you know, in the dinosaur times, the Earth was about 6 to 10 degrees hotter than it is now. Mm -hmm. But when that was true, the seas were also 200 feet higher. And like the entire world, the entire world was tropical. There were no ice regions anymore. Like there was nothing like that. Right. Um, and the other thing that's worrying is that um, the world is always in cycles of heating and cooling. And what we're in actually right now, all of human civilization literally has existed in the period between the last ice age and the next ice age, which is supposed to be coming. Right? right. So like in this like we're in this kind of like middle period of time right now where the earth is actually not as cold as it can get or as hot as it can get. And it's, you know, the last, what, 50,000 years, question mark, that quote, I'm heavy, heavy air quotes, like organized human civilization has really existed. Right. Right. Like maybe 50,000 years. And that's not a very large amount of time in the earth's cycles. So really all of our civilization has taken place in a very small window of opportunity in which the climate is basically more or less what it is like now, what it's been like before, right before the industrial revolution. That's been the climate that has fostered human civilization. Right. Right. Um, so here's one of the other worrying facts. Let's, let's roll back. Let's roll back a little bit here. Let's oh, roll back. Okay. Let's go all the way back to what the fuck is climate change. Right. 50,000 years ago. So the problem is the earth's getting warmer. We've mm -hmm. talked about this. Why is the Earth getting warmer? Let's talk about first why, and then we'll talk about why it's a problem. Right. So the Earth is getting warmer, as far as we can tell, with all of the best scientists and the best data gathering and yeah. the most observation. We can tell the Earth is getting warmer because the concentration of carbon dioxide, which is a molecule that's part of our air normally, is increasing in the air. Um, carbon dioxide is... Um, is a is a byproduct of like a lot of chemical reactions that we use, most notably, um, most notably burning gas, right? And because the carbon dioxide is increasing in the air, um, it has like a couple effects. It's what's called a greenhouse gas. The way a greenhouse, like a glass greenhouse, works is it lets sunlight in, and then it traps some of the sun inside itself as heat, mm -hmm. and increasing the the carbon dioxide content in our air is basically like putting more layers on the greenhouse. It has like both the effect of making the air thicker, so less heat, like like a, like our, our whole world is balanced around a really crazy series of factors that go through our entire like universe. But like a huge part of it is that when light comes from the sun and, and comes to the earth, a, a, a huge amount of it actually just hits the earth and bounces back into space, mm -hmm. right? That's why planets are bright. 
It's because they're bouncing all this light back off, from the sun off of them. So a huge shitload of the energy that, and the heat that we get from the sun actually just goes right back out into space. Um, that's also why like Venus is like the hottest planet. It's like, I don't know, 400 or 400 degrees Celsius there and it never gets cold even at night whereas Mercury which is hotter than this which is way closer to the Sun actually it gets as hot as Venus during the day and then at night mm. it gets super cold because Venus's air is thicker yeah. right? so so it holds the Sun energy in yeah also, well, I, was, I, was, I was reading a thing about Mars and how they were talking about because they found remnants of water on, on Mars yeah uh, or like what was where where there was water at right. some point right and like oh, okay what happened and they determined they said you know well we don't know what happened like whether it was a volcano or whether it was uh you know a, a, an asteroid hit the or, or whatever hit the earth um and and put up enough uh, uh muck into the air that the greenhouse effect effectively like went nuts and fried the whole fucking place right which um Incidentally, could happen on Earth. Yeah, <laughs> um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, so, so, so the carbon dioxide mm-hmm. is getting thicker in the air. Why is that? Well, back in the day, Jamie, the mm-hmm. only way that you had to to do stuff. Um, in order to do stuff, Jamie. Yeah. Jamie. Tell me, Richard, please. <laughs> Jamie. Tell me how to do stuff. In order to do but stuff. But don't tell me too much because our podcast next week is explained to Jamie doing, doing stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah. But that's more about getting getting busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. In order to do literally anything, in order to lift your arm, in order to have your muscles move and breathe, your body requires energy. And it, and your body stores energy in all kinds of different ways, like mm-hmm. fat. You know, the, the, there's fat in your body that you get from eating stuff. Um, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying, Jamie, maybe it's time to start hitting the gym a little more. No, um, basically, like your body has chemical reactions inside it that that break down the fuel that you've been storing, um, and, and and output it as energy, and that lets you do stuff. Where did you get the energy? You got it from animals and plants that you ate. Where did they get the energy? If it was an animal, it ate it from a plant or another animal. Yeah. And if it's a plant. It got it from the sun, right? The plants are basically the entire bedrock of life on Earth because plants are the organisms on Earth that take the energy coming in from the sun and turn it into like their ability to do stuff. And then everyone else lives off plants in some way, basically. Right. Be- because the, 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 the building block of all life on Earth is that energy comes from the sun. Right. Cool? Humans figured out a long time ago that you can like take the energy in other stuff and use it for things. And the classic example of this is like wood. So like a tree has spent years, decades, taking slowly taking energy from the sun and taking carbon dioxide out of the air and using it to grow. This is one of the, this is, um, this is going to be a lot of like grade grade three science class stuff, which is kind of cool. But that's like, great. That's the last time I paid photosynthesis? attention. Photosynthesis. Yeah. So photosynthesis is the process by which a plant takes both sunlight and carbon dioxide grabs them the plant takes the carbon from the carbon dioxide and releases just oxygen right. so that and you've heard like forests are good for oxygen trees produce oxygen this is this is that process so basically and it and it stores the carbon inside its body as like the physical part of the plant and it also stores the light from the sun as like chemicals so when you take a tree um when you take a tree and you light it on fire, what you've done is in the spot of like if you take a lighter and you put it against the dry piece of wood, in the exact spot where the flame is, you're getting the air moving so fast that the oxygen in the air will smash into the carbon that's stored in the tree and snap them together and they'll make carbon dioxide again and fly off the tree into the air. And when that happens, it also releases that little bit of sun energy. Right. Right. So the so and and it happens in this kind of like domino effect where that little bit of re, that chemical reaction of the oxygen hitting the carbon creates enough heat that it makes the next ones do the same thing and the next ones and the next ones. That's why fires need oxygen to keep burning. And that's why um, and that's why stuff that lights on fire tends to stay on fire and burn the whole time. And we realized as humans that if we used this power, you could like do more stuff because you're not just using the fuel in your own body anymore. Suddenly you're taking this tree's lifetime of fuel and you're using it all at once and you can do more stuff with that, right? Right. Um, Then all of a sudden there was this big revolution um, in in the 19th century. And that was that they found this rock you could burn 
that was like way better at burning stuff than wood. And they and called it, was it cold. Bernie Rock. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. And to this day, the Bernie Bros still <laughs> plague us. Um, no, um, they called it coal. Yeah. Right. And and at the same time as there was all this like new technology being invented, uh, they realized coal could fuel all of it or rather it was like a cyclical relationship they realized that you could burn coal and use it to make like way more stable kinds of fires mm -hmm. and and you could use it for this um for steam technology where which was like a lot more controllable than fire right wood fire is you can only kind of use heat stuff up in it right you can't use it it's not that uh, useful otherwise, but right, when you, but you can you use, use steam, exactly, to push something. Exactly. Once you have steam, you can. It's like what, what, what steam is, right? Obviously, you heat up some water, and then a jet of, and then steam comes out of it, right? Yeah. Water vapor. And if you control the steam and like funnel it into a certain location, suddenly you can control it and use it for all kinds of stuff. So, like the way steam technology works is, um, you, you you create a bunch of steam, you push it into basically any situation where it has to be funneled. It, 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 like it, it gets funneled through a very small area and then it like turns a wheel or something. And when the wheel turns, then you can just use like gears and shit to make that wheel um, maximize like the power to, that's coming exactly, out. Exactly. Or like yeah. make it do what you want it to do. So right. for like on a train, like um, the steam pushes a wheel that's like attached to a rod and the rod is attached to all the wheels of the train. And right. that's how the train moves. It pushes the wheels of the train, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then as. Um, and then as we got hungry and hungrier for coal, because all of these new technologies with steam were being invented, they needed coal, we needed more coal. We started digging in the earth, looking for more coal, and we found all this other shit. We found stuff like natural gas, um, which is like big pockets of air that are also burnable, we realized. And we found crude oil. Crude oil is, um, it's basically like dead, long dead life forms, um, which, which died and were, trapped before they could decompose so if you died right now and like your body rotted in a field <laughs> yeah all of the energy you've stored in your body would slowly filter back into the atmosphere yeah right it gets eaten by mushrooms yeah whatever. it gets eaten by mushrooms it stays it yeah. stays in the environment that's here now um and as a and and this is a good time for this. So you remember the water cycle? This is another one of those grade three science things. Sure. The water cycle describes basically how there's like a fixed amount of water on the earth that's just kind of constantly moving around. The water rains out of the clouds. It arrives on the ground. You know, it nourishes things. And then it heats up, gets put back into water vapor, goes back into the sky and kind of keeps cycling around. Right. There's many different kinds of cycles in the environment. And one of them is the carbon cycle. Um, and basically... The general principle of that is that the, the world, the whole ecosystem of the world is balanced around carbon moving around. So if you cut down a tree and burn it, you're actually not going to contribute, you're not going to mess with uh, the climate that much because like the climate expects the carbon in the tree to be part of the system, right? right? And generally speaking, um, there will be the same amount of carbon moving around constantly between the forest and plants and then back into the atmosphere as stuff burns or dies because like fires occur naturally with lightning storms and shit like that, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But if sometimes carbon like drops out of the environment and, and, and it doesn't go back into the environment. And that happens, like, it happened a lot many millions of years ago when the world was mostly swamps. Like if something dies, falls in the muck, gets buried before it has a chance to decompose... Um, all of the like, all of the energy inside it, all of the like carbon inside that life form, will stay there and it will never rot away. And eventually, like the pressure of all of the like earth on top of it squished it into this super condensed form, which is like this black goop we call crude oil. Mm -hmm. And people realized you could really burn the shit out of that stuff. They would find massive lakes of it underground, where I don't know over the years, like the rock had pushed all of these dead organisms together into these big things. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the problem, essentially the problem is the environment doesn't expect that carbon to be in the carbon cycle. So we're suddenly adding all this extra carbon into the carbon cycle when we're burning these oil. Right. Like we found trillions and trillions and trillions of um, dead organisms and we're burning them so that we can do more stuff. Like all the stuff they could have done in their lifetimes, <laughs> we're like taking all of their muscle energy and using it to fuel everything we do now, you know? Right. Our electricity generation, our transportation, our et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
Mm-hmm. So we're releasing a shitload of carbon into the atmosphere. And we have been for like 150 solid years, 160 years. Um, and, and that was all great. <laughs> until, yeah, what a party. Until we realized um, the earth was getting hotter. Yeah. Um, and not only was the earth getting hotter, suddenly there was a shitload of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And right now, I, I believe the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is at about 438 parts per million, which means right now our atmosphere is about 0.04% carbon dioxide, hmm. right? Um, what's freaky about that is uh, in that Antarctic ice tube I mentioned, they've never ever found the highest concentration of carbon dioxide they've ever found in the last 800,000 years was 0.3. Right. So we're already like, ze- like you know, we've, we're, we're, we're 30% more than we can possibly measure in the last 800,000 years of, of right. Earth's history. Human beings setting yeah. records all day, man. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We're just winning. We're so much winning. Yeah. Um, so th- there's a lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than there has been before. And the temperature now is also a lot increased. It's increased um, almost one degree on average since before the Industrial Revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, now, why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem for a number of reasons. Now, the reason that's probably on everybody's mind is like the weather is going to go crazy, which is true. Sure. Um, there's just been these huge hurricanes in the southern United States and in the Caribbean and in Mexico. Um, and while it's impossible to be like this is because of climate change, um, definitely like when things are warmer, storms get bigger. That's, right. a, that's a fact of science. Um, if the world is warming up, storms will get bigger. That's going to happen. Um, other sh- terrible things that can happen include um, agriculture will permanently change. Um, so right now we grow a lot of shit in like very hot tropical parts of the world and those things are shipped all over the place, right? Mm-hmm. But even a small change in temperature in the very hottest places we grow things will make those places unable to grow anything. Right. And so... And also, like, bees will move because bees have, like, a maximum heat where they're like, this is bullshit. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> so, like, the bees are going to start leaving areas that are getting too hot. And when bee- and bees increase the yield of crops like a shitload and tons of places rely on them. Mm-hmm. So, already we talked about, like, earlier in a different episode of the podcast, bananas have been growing in British Columbia this year and, like, olives have been growing in Oregon and shit. That's, like, going to start happening. Like... Right. We're going to have to, if we still want bananas, we're going to have to start growing them farther north. But that's like, you know, the herald of everything changing. Right. Like everything changing. Um, if the world starts getting too hot, really bad things are going to start happening. Um, like, oh, I just want to say, like, speaking of greenhouse gas, yeah. Dolores Richard's sweet, sweet dog just came in the closet where we were recording and farted <laughs> yeah. so bad. Yeah, she crop dusted us. <laughs> and like, and now she left the closet and is yeah, giving us a smirk. That's real classy, Dolores. Thanks, Dolores. Um, yeah, and then so like, you know, the sea levels will rise because glaciers are melting, right? Mm-hmm. So there's going to be more water. Um, storms will get bigger. Like I said, that kind of stuff's going to happen. Um, as you said, with, I believe, 70... 70 degrees, if the Earth ever gets to 70, an average temperature of 70 degrees, which is like a lot hotter than it is now. Like no one's saying like this is going to happen tomorrow. But that's the point at which there will be a chain reaction and all of our oceans will vaporize because um, water vapor itself is also a greenhouse gas, right? So if there is more water and the world's hotter, more of it's going to turn into vapor and go into the atmosphere. And that's actually going to increase the rate that things are going to get hotter. Right. This is part of what is scary about climate change is that yeah, it's, it's a point of no return. It's, it's exponential. Yeah. Right. So like the more, the warmer it gets and the thicker the atmosphere gets, the faster it will get warmer and thicker. Right. If that makes sense. It totally does. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I was watching this video um, yesterday, it wasn't about climate change. It was just, uh, it was just like a, a fun video of a cartoon like average sized human walking yeah and as it walks all these um not dinosaurs like uh, um uh, long extinct mammals from i think the ice age p 
period, like the Crozaic period or whatever, walk by it in the other way. And it's just like a fun way to go, oh, like, look at that weird animal that used to li- used to exist and look how big it is compared to a human or, or whatever. Right. And you go, you go through and you see, you know, it's this really cool video, very simple, but you see maybe 150 different types of animal all of which I've never seen before, mm-hmm. which is what makes the video fun. But partway through, I was sort of watching, looking at all these animals going, oh, look at that animal, look at that animal. I never even knew they existed, never knew they existed. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know they existed because they're extinct. All, every one of these animals died um, out completely. And there's the human walking the other direction. There's sort of this poetry that I, I, I saw, which I was like, we think we're special, but like someday the human could be walking in the other direction on this on this video you know they're, they're, it's totally reasonable for at like literally every other animal that that has existed on this earth that doesn't live now all of its species lived and died and is gone mm-hmm. and yeah the you know yeah you the people think people have this weird god complex thinking humanity is special in some way that we that we We'll never, you know, be 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 forced with a choice that 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 uh, where where all of our existence hangs in the balance. Yeah, nature is super indifferent to our survival. Yeah, like whatever happens to us, the planet will still be here. It'll just be uninhabitable for us, maybe. Yeah. Um, okay, so does that does that that's what climate change is? Yeah, it's the fact that because we're burning so much oil, every car on the road, every boat in the ocean, every airplane in the sky. Um, because we're so hungry for these things um, for, and for like kind of the standard of living that we have, we're very rapidly changing the composition of our atmosphere. It's making things hotter because it traps heat in. Um, and also like particles in the atmosphere kind of act as like tiny mirrors. So mm-hmm. they r- reflect light back downwards at the same time, right? right? Light comes in and then it can't, it bounces off the shit in the atmosphere and hits the earth again. Um, and all these things combine to make, start making the earth hotter. Um, and we're already seeing my, like outlier effects of what that's going to look like. Right. Um, Luckily, we're up here in Canada. Yeah, so. that's right. We'll be fine. It's just going to get nice and hot. Yeah, we're like the people who showed up to the music festival like late. Yeah. And then like they had to change seating, and because we showed up late, we were further back, and we didn't have to move. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. everyone who showed up right away and got the good seats were like, "Oh, I showed up at at six thirty, and yeah. now I have to move to the fucking back of the line." Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Fuckers. Fuckers. Um, Idiots. Yeah, okay, so where are we at right now today? Well, lots of people know that this is a problem. 97%, 97.3% of scientists agree that this is a problem. And the honest truth is that there's like a handful, we're talking like less than 50 scientific papers ever published that have either like found that climate change is not happening have found that it's not bad that it's happening or have found that the like oil is unrelated to climate change. So basically like the things that are like, no, it's not a problem. Only about 40 papers have ever found that and none of them have ever had their findings duplicated successfully, which right. means they're super scientifically dubious. Right. This is happening. Mm-hmm. Like we have to acknowledge that this is happening. And it's troubling. That's troubling because another argument I hear often is like, you know, you'll say 97% of scientists agree that this is happening. And then someone will say, yeah, but 99% of scientists disagreed with Galileo. You know, and you go like, well, I guess that's true. But if like we can't always, you know, look at the one guy out of a thousand and, who disagrees and go, that guy's probably right because Galileo is right. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's a fucked up way to, to, to uh, rationalize something. Right. Well, and here's the other thing. Like, even if you don't think it's important to uh, address the oil industry because climate change is an existential crisis to us, which it absolutely is. And you should. Um, there's no fucking reason for us to be as all in in oil as we are now because it's going to run out. Like, it's going to run out. Mm-hmm. Oil reserves are, people love to talk about, if you ever look at like how people talk about oil, it's always like, ah, oh, the endless oil field. This is the biggest oil field. Every country in the world has like a weirdly different technical claim to having the most oil. Like, Canada says like the tar sands are like the biggest single deposit of 
crude oil anywhere in the world. And Saudi Arabia is like, it has the biggest oil field anywhere in the world. And then Venezuela is like, it has the biggest deposits of oil. And, and these things all mean like slightly different things. Right. But it, what it, like, there's always like a language of abundance about oil, especially that comes from politicians who are pro-oil and from like companies that are pro-oil. You know, like, oh man, like they found massive oil stores, right? Um, but it's, it's, it's all kind of like, it's, it's all kind of a small... It, what's funny is that we know there's not unlimited oil. We know that. One second of thinking, you'll be like, well, obviously it will end somewhere. So, like, why do we think of it as, as abundant. it being abundant? Instead yeah. of being like, we have exactly this much oil on the books right now. Right. How long will this last us? Because mm. the thing is, it will run out eventually. And if we're a country like Canada that relies a shitload on oil to make money and do anything... Why are like we need to be ready for when the oil runs out, which mm. it absolutely will. There's yeah. just like nobody, no way it's not going to run out, right? Um, Unless we heat the earth up so, <laughs> so much, much that all the humans die, yeah, get buried in swamps as oil, as and become oil, oil, and become oil. That's gonna that's like the galaxy brain approach to climate change. <laughs> it's like it's like the normal person's like, ah, oh, we need to. We need to like, you know, buy, make sure that we invest in good, like in green companies. And then like the, like the, like, pl like the planet brain is like, <laughs> it's like, we need to ban oil immediately. And then the galaxy brains, like we, humanity must sacrifice itself and become oil for the next <laughs> humanity as a mass suicide to make sure they have limitless oil. <laughs> they'll have more oil than they'll ever fucking need. Um, yeah. Uh, no, it's going to run out eventually. Yeah. So like, why not? Why not? And also, this is the other thing is like, regardless of whether thing you think um, you think that climate change is real and bad. I was just going to say, like, what is the downside to having alternative? Alternatives. Good alternatives. Yeah. Well, like, why is also, also, yeah. oil is also um, super fucking inefficient when we use gas to like power a car? Three quarters of the energy produced by that. The, the, the fuel is just a lot is like heat it's just waste gone. it's waste energy one quarter of the energy um, goes into pushing the car forward and right. running the car and three quarters of the energy just is like it's used exploding it and it's just because it's so inefficient like we capture yeah. it losses heat into the atmosphere and on top of that and we've mentioned this on the podcast before like the tar sands is considered dirty oil because it uses almost as much energy to yeah. extract as it does to to as it gives us back yeah, yeah exactly yeah. that's correct yes yeah, it's like it's, and it's something crazy like 90 percent or you know yeah, like it's, it, like it's a, a huge, huge amount, amount yeah. where you go what's the what's even the fucking point and then guy you know scrooge mcduck jumps into his money pile and you go oh yeah there's the point that's yeah. the that's it exactly hashtag neoliberalism check out that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, check that out episode. our neoliberalism episode <laughs> but that's the thing it's like why do we have like why why the fuck have we gotten here what and what's going on and the honest truth is it, it is capitalism that's the problem um like like uh cars started with like modern cars started with the model t right yeah. and basically the thing is gasoline cars and electric cars when cars were first being created in the early 20th century were equally viable and in fact most people would have bet on electric cars becoming the better car option because they're way quieter easier to use way easier to maintain mm. and um and they're just like more advanced technology right right like whereas but the thing is they got a consumer gasoline car to market faster and then dominated the market um and competitors duplicated that working model and then basically everything just snowballed from there like eventually the barriers to creating an economically viable electric car in the capitalist system were just too high right um and that's why we have gasoline cars now right um and as also as car companies and oil companies became extremely powerful corporations and actors in our society they also actively suppressed electric cars from I, i've also heard a lot about uh, like uh animals like our, our livestock is a massive greenhouse gas producer yeah i think like cow farts like tear up the o ozone layer yeah yeah methane uh, yeah methane tears up the ozone layer um and like i'm mad i think I don't know. I don't want to be mis. I don't want to uh, mislead. But I think that like our livestock produces more methane than our cars do. Yeah, 
and well, and also it's not just that. It's all it's not just like the actual raising of the livestock, but it's also like, like the, feeding them and transporting. Yeah, it's them feeding them. And it's it's ra- like the plants that we raise to feed them is also like a pretty wasteful endeavor. And then and then yeah, driving them around. Yeah, and shit like that. that well, which is why it's such a big deal that there are, you know there's like I I was watching this this video about this company that that grows meat now. Right. Like from step from stem. I've cells. seen that too. Yeah. 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 And, and and that's one of the one of the things is they, you know, they put it down in front of a foodie and they give them a, a, a steak that comes from a cow and a steak that was grown in a lab and the foodie can't tell which one is which. Yeah. And yeah, that was the big point is they're like, we can, we can have, we can eat meat and, you know, A, like no harm to animals. So like vegetarians can, can chill a little bit on that, but also we don't need to fucking feed it all. Like, yeah. And we don't need to transport it around the way we, we used to. And yeah, and that's it exciting. Takes the waiting game out. That's and, and that's super exciting. But the fun, but the problem is even inside, even with exciting things like that, the the fundamental problem is that the electricity that's powering that lab is being generated by either, um, d- depending on where it is in the world, coal sometimes. Not in can- not in Ontario anymore, but some yeah. places. Alberta is run on, generated runs by on coal. coal. Yep, which is super bad. For, yeah. it's like such a worse greenhouse gas emitter than oil or by natural gas, which is a greenhouse gas emitter, right? So even if you're using electricity to, um, to, to create green innovations like that, the chances are good it's fossil fuel based, right? right? And, the pro- and we need to, in order to save ourselves from serious potential catastrophe, we need to roll back the amount of carbon in the atmosphere to the point, you know, ideally the point before the industrial revolution. That's the goal of Stuff like the the Paris Climate Agreement, which you've probably heard about. Oh yeah, um, it's like the big climate international climate agreement right now, and obviously with um, Captain Cheeto in the White House, it has not been <laughs> it's not it's not had its fair day. But um, but but the objective of the Paris Climate Agreement is to uh, limit the amount of global warming to 1.5 degrees above industrial revolution levels, and hopefully reverse it entirely back to pre-industrial right. revolution levels. Now, Elon Musk talks a lot about fission being the answer. Mm-hmm. Like, so, well, no, that's not true. Like, he, you know, he pushes solar, obviously, like Tesla and, uh, yeah. you know, his companies are, are huge pr- producers of solar. But, like, I've, I've heard nuclear power is actually a really awesome viable option, but was kind of given a bad name, like with by, what, envir- yeah. by what, what 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 happened with Chernobyl, as well as what happened in Japan, Fuk- and Fukushima. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, nuclear is not as bad a greenhouse gas emitter at all. So it could be kind of a short term solution. It does have like serious environmental implications. Yeah, and just like. Nuclear plants are like relatively rare because we're still very much an oil based electricity generating civilization. Um, as you proliferate more nuclear plants, you will also have more accidents. That's just like just how that works. Mm-hmm. So I think that people are like, why don't we just skip nuclear and go to solar? Mm-hmm. We can go to solar. We have the technology. We need to get to solar. Um, the thing is, solar, a solar, a truly solar civilization will be very different and look very different than our civilization now because our civilization so far has all been about um, like fundamentally about extracting resources like all of Western civilization has been a war to extract re- resources and the history of Western civilization civilization has been about extracting resources like Canada exists as a country because England and France wanted more resources and stuff they right. wanted like funny pelts for their hats and shit yeah. right but you know we're kind of approaching the question of if we need to do that anymore mm-hmm. because if we manage to get ourselves to the point where we're using solar for almost all of our energy that won't go away for billions like millions and millions of years yeah right we won't need to be competing for those resources anymore the same way now obviously we'll still be competing for like the resources used to make the <laughs> the stuff that gets the solar electricity but it's a very different world than the one we're in now where everyone's ruthlessly competing to extract oil. Yeah. 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 I, this is maybe makes it a bit abstract, but I was thinking about this over this last week and kind of thinking about selfishness and like solipsism in right. people and how th- like how rare it is for someone to actually legitimately 
think of future people yeah in in, a, in an argument you know what I mean like it, it, and and I'm not saying that like you know people on the right uh, don't do this and people on the left do because actually I, th- I don't think it's that way I think it's you know, I, there's a lot of value uh, projecting, I find, you know, even amongst my friends where people say, like, uh, don't be racist. And you and you go, what a what a bold and noble opinion. You know, you're, you're just you're you're saying that so that people, everyone looks at you and goes, oh, that guy must not be racist. Yeah. Virtue signal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and. And I, it, 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 it's truly heroic and rare when you when you when I encounter someone that I go, oh, you actually care about this beyond yourself. You know, mm-hmm. you don't, you're not just saying switch to solar because it's a popular opinion in your friend group. You're saying switch to solar because the future depends on it or, mm-hmm. or, or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I used to, I went through a phase of being like a big Elon Musk fanboy. I know there are many of them in the world. Yeah. I'm, way more uh hesitant i I still think it's cool but um if you don't know who that is he's the ceo of tesla and spacex and solar city or his three big companies um i think he's cool i think he's interesting i think he's like a weirdo and probably not a very nice guy but he's he's unquestionably a genius but i I, I understand he suffers no fools yeah i'm i'm hesitant to tech like the tech industry the whole tech thing um I'm wary of it because it is such a capitalist thing, oh, right? Yeah. It is like ruthlessly capitalist. And so because of that, I'm very, very suspicious of them and their motives. But the propaganda I read about Elon Musk does say he actually is one of those guys. Like his basically life goals are to get the human civilization off the oil off oil by creating a viable solar alternative. And that's mm-hmm. what his electric car company, Tesla and his um, solar panel home, solar panel company, solar city are about. Yeah. And then his other goal is um, re- he, like, he had this realization that y- we need to have humans on another planet because if there's like a freak catastrophic world ending event on earth, human civilization will be wiped out and the, be- and you need to have like, it's like saving a copy of humanity on a different planet so that if we lose earth, we at least have humans somewhere else. Right. And like, he's trying to do that with his private Mars colonization company. Right. Um, which is like making cool strides and that's like exciting. But, um, I don't know. I don't think we can trust the tech people to save us. I think we need to get on this shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we've talked, I've mentioned this a few times, but like an electric new deal, like a solar new deal, like we need to, to get really serious about like society wide change, infrastructure change, society wide transition to solar power. Mm -hmm. Um, we need people to like, we need to build a shitload more solar panels. We need people to, put them on houses. We all need to learn how to put them on houses and put a shitload of people to work doing that. We, uh, we need big time uh, infrastructure to, to move electricity around. This is one of the biggest problems with solar and wind power right now is like it can't, it's not sunny everywhere all the time and it's not windy everywhere all the time. And generally speaking, you just, you need better uh, high speed electricity like high voltage electricity lines to just be able to move electricity from wherever the wind is to wherever people need the power right right um so we need that infrastructure also we need i mean it's cool that tesla makes these like solar charging stations that are like gas stations for their cars that are self-sufficient they charge solarly and you just pull onto it and it charges your car while you're sitting on it yeah um we need stuff like that we need it fast yeah um we're running out of time. Like, yeah, I just, you know, I was looking at, um, uh, I'm going to Singapore in, uh, November and I was looking at some Singapore stuff and they, it's an amazing, that's an amazing country. Mm-hmm. And the, and, and one of the things that's amazing about it is they just all seem on board with like that kind of thing, like yeah. with solar and as, and uh, uh, also pushing, um, agriculture into cities and like how can we squeeze a tree in here yeah and how super can we dense country yeah how can we and, put, um, put trees all up and down the sides of these buildings and yeah. cover everything in solar panels and yeah, singapore also has the advantage i think of a not being an oil extracting country so not right. having a big entrenched interest in keeping oil going which is like our big problem mm-hmm. and many people's big problem like france is a glow is a global leader for 
new technologies and zero emissions technologies because France doesn't have oil. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? France doesn't have oil, so they're like, no, we're going to, right. we'll show you guys. Uh, yeah. um, if they had oil, they I bet they'd the, be the, like... Yeah, a car, a car <laughs> in the race. Yeah, so exactly. They, yeah. Yeah. yeah, except they're Teslas. Yeah. Um, and Singapore, I think, also has like a king. It has like an authoritarian power structure. Oh, yeah, maybe. Um, so I think that they have a lot more like, you know, ability to be like... Put a tree there. <laughs> or your hands getting cut off, motherfucker. Um, yeah, they used to have a lot of pirates. I know that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Pirates. <laughs> um, yeah, and... Uh, yeah, so, so... So, obviously, yeah. So, we need a big transition to solar energy and wind energy and hydroelectric energy to some extent. Mm. Um what other stuff can we do? Well, we can encourage the oil industry to slowly die. We're doing, people are doing things like this with stuff like a carbon tax. You've probably heard of this, which basically just means that if you burn carbon in order to do stuff, you have to pay the government so that the government can pay for transitioning to solar. Right. Carbon taxes are like really unpopular with conservatives. And it's one of the things that I like to yell about. Um, consider it like the permanent fund. We don't have conservatives, you fucking assholes right. who didn't get us a permanent fund. Check out our, um, UBI episode for information on that. But basically like, basically it's like, if you want to poison everybody, you got to invest in helping us. Mm -hmm. That's the, how much does the government tax companies that mine oil, like on the basis that the oil belongs to the country and not the people who take it out of the ground. Like it depends on which province you're in. Because in theory, resources are the purview of the provinces. And there's like some federal control over them. But, but that's why like Alberta has a culture of having like not that much tax on oil. And yes, it does benefit from oil, obviously. Like oil companies, you know, they all sure. the fucking theaters and art galleries and shit are named after oil companies in Alberta. Yeah. But let's just say they could be contributing a fuckload more than they are. And they're not in, like I said, in Alberta. Okay, I'll just talk about it. So, you know, there's a permanent fund in Alaska. So when Alaskans realized they had a shitload of oil, they were like, any company that extracts oil here has to pay a certain amount of money for all the oil they extract into this big mutual fund basically mm -hmm. and we manage it we invest in it we invest in it and however much interest it earns every year we divide that up and pay everyone in Alberta and Alaska that however much it is when you divide it among everyone right um, so every citizen gets in years where the fund makes a profit every citizen gets a check and then also now they have like billions and billions of dollars that they can use to build solar shit if they want to right right um, yeah, I mean, this, this, this ties back in again into our neoliberalism episode and, and the idea of a maximum income as, and in this case, like a maximum income, I think would work as a deterrent for just taking all the oil. Like, you know, I feel like, and this is, there's a lot of ifs and what ifs yeah, who, and da, who da, da, da. owns oil? But Don't if, we exactly. all own this oil? Well, we all own the repercussions of oil. I was a hundred percent. And so like, hundred percent. And so like, that's the fucked bit. You know, it's like, you, you, fine, you own, you, you found this oil. I think, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I want to say, I think the government should make this rule, but the, the government should say this. Okay. You found this oil. Great. Good find here. You, you've, this is going to be hugely profitable for the whole country. You have now got the maximum income you can get as a Canadian citizen based on mm. our new anti-neoliberalism rules <laughs> yeah. uh, that we've instated. So you're taken care of for the rest of your life because you found this oil fair and square. Yeah. But you don't get to make $40 billion no, mining No, there's no it. reason for that. Because if you did that, then we would all suffer an immense consequence of, A, like it's not really fair because the oil kind of doesn't belong to you and also uh that burning it the results of burning it is bad for everybody not just you well not just that um and here's a talking point that doesn't get said in public that much but that should be especially as i think the conversation is moving leftward and more people are finding socialism and leftist based critiques of stuff the lifestyles of the ultra rich are way more climate polluting than the lifestyles of even like the moderately rich right. right so like the worst thing an individual person can do for climate change is air travel that's mm. really bad mm. right it, it, like considering like for one person the act of traveling by air that's like the most you will contribute to climate change like dollar for dollar right and rich people flying on private planes like it's like you know it's like four people in that plane that's way more dollar for dollar climate change than you 
than even like you would put in when you're flying on a 747 right. with 300 other people. Right, or like a yacht. A yacht is super bad for climate change. Eating expensive shit from Italy that's flown from Italy to fucking Delaware is horrible for climate change, yeah. right? Like, if if the if the very richest people took a lifestyle cut to the point where they were only quite rich, there would be a noticeable reduction in greenhouse emissions, I bet. Right. You know what I mean? Like, the ultra-rich who are profiting from the extraction of oil are also the largest individual contributors to, mm. to climate change, but no one's saying that. We should start saying, don't fly on a fucking private plane. Yeah. You have no reason to. There's no... That's an inexcusable luxury because you're fucking... You're putting... You're poisoning people. Right. And it's the people who are the most vulnerable in the in developing countries in the third world who are going to suffer first and die first. Yeah, what was the... that? Do you see that interview with the guy from Monsanto where he's sitting down with the reporter and the por- reporter's talking about what this chemical that's been found in the water supply in whatever state in in the u.s it might, it might have been uh uh what's it flint or whatever um but there he's talking about this chemical and uh and the guy the monsanto guy is like yeah but the, the that chemical has been found in the water supply in this in this city but it's not harmful to humans and the reporter goes well actually i'm, I'm happy to hear you say that because we happen to have a cup full of this chemical and so if you, you of course you're telling the truth and you wouldn't mind having a sip of it and yeah, the, and the guy flips out and it's like, well, I'm not a fucking idiot. And he's like, but you said it's not bad for you. He's like, I, I know that if I drank it, nothing would happen to me. He's like, then take a sip of it. And he's like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And he just like really gets uncomfortable. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, you are totally towing a party line <laughs> straight to hypocrite town. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's brutal. Um, I feel like this, is, this episode is going to go really long. There's so many things I want to talk about. I'm yeah. actually going to say on air, having not discussed this with you now, why don't we make this episode, um, here's what climate change is, and let's do another episode on like stuff, politics of climate change, because we haven't talked about cap and trade, we yeah. haven't talked about indigenous issues, we haven't talked about a lot of stuff that we could be talking about. I'm totally into it. Um, I think we should also do an episode on Elon Musk himself. Sure, I'd be done with that. Why He's not? an interesting guy. Sure. Really interesting. I mean, yeah, really interesting. Sort of a Tony Starky, or at least that's how they're selling him. He's like not sexy Tony Stark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lumpy He's potato looking. Tony yeah, Stark. Yeah, Tony Stark. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a serious problem. It's happening to all of us. Yeah. We'll, we're, let's talk more about the politics of it on another episode. Because we, sure. we definitely dipped a toe in here. But the, the long and short of it is that like, this is a society-wide problem. This is a global problem. Yeah. And as the beneficiaries of climate change, like climate change benefits us more than it benefits the people who are suffering. Like right. we're the ones who are getting all the nice things. We have the good lifestyle. We have luxury. We have comfort. We have exotic foods. We have all the things that climate change, the, all the pluses of climate change are coming to us. All the downsides of climate change are beginning to, you know, the Caribbean has been devastated by right. these hurricanes. Um, Southeast Asia being devastated by climate events, Bangladesh sinking into the sea, as we said on the refugees episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to start getting worse. Um, and by the time it's bad for us, it will be way too late. Yeah. Way too late. Well, and then, yeah. I mean, you know, we already said it, but I, I feel like this is sort of the, the point I, that I keep running over in my brain is like, even if, even if these people who say, you know, climate change isn't happening, da, 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 even if they're right, like, even if, like, let's just imagine, what is the downside? to stopping using oil and making the air a bit cleaner, making the water cleaner and, you know, endangering our, alco- our, 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 uh, our, our agriculture a little less, you know, like why not? Well, the downside is that uh, the oil people might have to make less money, Jamie. Right. That's well, it. I'm sorry. I take it all back. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> oil people. You know, who will think of their feelings? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Honestly, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a crazy thing. It's, it's, Honest, it's exactly the same as like back in the 50s and shit when cigarette companies knew cigarettes were killing people, but they did everything they could to yeah. lie to the public, anything they could to keep selling cigarettes, to keep the information from getting out that cigarettes were actually bad for you. Right. Every fucking dirty, underhanded, immoral sack of shit thing that they possibly could to keep people smoking cigarettes knowing all those people were dying faster we're going to die of lung cancer which is like a horrible disease yeah like 
they still did it to make that money. And that's what's happening to us right now. Yeah. That's what's happening to us right now. They are feeding us this shit. They're holding on for dear life. They know their days are fucking numbered. They know we're all going down. They know we're fucking dying. Yeah. They know our grandkids are going to watch wildfires ravaging all of the fucking cities that we once knew and loved. That fucking the resorts that we think are beautiful that we watch on TV will be miles underwater. That all of the fucking food that we eat that we think is so important and has existed forever will be gone. Like we will not have almonds in 50 years. We will not have avocados in 50 years. Like they know this shit and they're still telling people that it's not happening or they're saying, Oh, we can't be sure. But wait, so if we don't have avocados, what are all the millennials going to eat? Each other. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the Thunderdome, millennials. (laughs) There's no participation trophies here. Uh, I think I just fucking created Fox News' first prestige TV show. (laughs) The Thunderdome. Yeah. The Climate Dome. (laughs) Okay. Okay, I've heard enough. Yeah, yeah. I've um, heard enough. I want to get out of this farty closet. Yeah. No, oh, sweet Dolores. Sweet Dolores. What <laughs> medicine are you on? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just farts. <laughs> just farts. Just farts. <laughs> just bottled farts. Bottled farts. Yeah, you gotta, Aren't you, baby? You got to keep those in. Yeah. If you liked this episode or didn't like it, if you have responses to it, questions, queries, hit us up. We are on Facebook at Explain to Jamie, at Explain Jamie on Twitter, Explain to Jamie at gmail.com. We're on Instagram. We're on, yeah. We're all, all the shit. All, we have so much shit, the, you all guys. Over the fucking place. Um, so let us know. Let us know if you have ideas for future topics. Like I said, sooner rather than later, I want to get to the political solutions of climate change, including what countries are doing about it, what ideas we have or to help reverse it. What, and I want to talk about um, especially indigenous issues around climate change because the two intersect quite a lot. But in the meantime, you can listen to our episode about Standing Rock, which starts to talk about this already. Yeah. Um, and yeah, let us know. We listen to everything that people send our way and we love hearing from people. So yeah, we so. smile when it's nice. We cry when it's not. If you liked it, send your friends. If you didn't like it, send, send it your, your enemies. enemies. <laughs> <laughs> classic. Uh, super classic. Until okay. next time, I'm Jamie. I'm Richard. It's been Explain It to Jamie. Oops.